Good evening everyone, time for another silver update. This is the four hour chart of silver provided by netdania.com. You can click on the link below. This is a primary trend line that we drew that was broken and based on that we made a recommendation of a potential option play for those who are interested in playing paper games. The option was the AGQ put it was the November 56 put. You can see now it's at 880. It's actually 960 by 980 bid ask. So it's roughly tripled in value. And uh, could there be more downside on silver? Definitely there could be. We had a big smackdown. We thought we were rounding up here and going into a rally. There was some divergence here between the MACD and the price, although not nearly as strong as the last time. But you can see this massive sell-off that we had coincided exactly with the release of the payroll numbers. Now, other, as others have documented in the past, uh, the cartel is very well known for selling off the precious metals on the morning of the release of the payroll numbers. Uh, I don't have those charts here, but uh, they're around. You can find them. And uh, very large sell-offs have occurred on that release date. So uh, we're going down now. The trend is still down. And uh, we were in kind of a trend channel here. And of course, we broke out of that trend channel. And now we're returning back into the trend channel. So we'll have to wait for next week to see what the follow-up is. This may be a very good weekend to buy. We may get a very strong bounce, especially because there seems to be some support in here. Or we may continue down. So if you're looking at the AGQ options, you might want to consider taking half off the table if you did. Uh, if you are in those, then you're up 300%, threefold. And if you sold half, then you would still be up 50% and then you could let it ride if we got some catastrophic drop then of course you could make a, a lot of money. Same thing with stacking silver and I'm going to cover some silver here uh, before we get to the main or after we get to the main story of the night but before we do that let's look at a couple of charts here. The first one is going to be the Japanese yen. Now we had a very we were on a very strong run up here the Bank of Japan and the Federal Reserve, of course, are propping up the dollar against the Japanese yen. That's a standard operating procedure for them. Another one that we've been keeping a close eye on, of course, is the Chinese currency. And we were watching that 16 cent level. That's a very important level. And we seem to have broken through that on the CNY versus USD and you can see we did get through that 16 cent level if we take the daily view here you can see that we're resuming an uptrend the resistance was around 15 15.9 cents or so and now we're resuming here although it looks like it may be rolling over so although the dollar is strengthening and you can see that on the dollar index chart there's a pretty big spike there. Although the dollar is strengthening, it's not strengthening against the Chinese currency. Now, the last chart I want to look at is Apple. We've been watching this very closely. It is in a severe downtrend, and it actually looks like it's near a catastrophic collapse. Uh, that could be a move uh, very low. On, on the blog, I pointed out that it appears to me that that Apple is heading towards what will be a fulfillment of the swing rule and roughly what that is is you take the size of the move up and then you go down by as much so that's going to project a price of roughly 150 to 175 on the downside if that happens of course that's going to be catastrophic for Apple investors but then again as I point out many times all you need to do is look at the chart to see that this is a tremendous bubble and it has to collapse It just uh, trees don't grow to the sky so we're going to do something like this or even worse now, let's get to the questions of the night the first one is from George Silver 
and he asks why are there no cash for silver shops dear brother John in every city in France you may see cash for gold shops but never cash for silver shop I presume this is the same in most countries why is that well that's true you don't see cash for silver shops although I think you probably can sell your silver at the cash for gold shops but uh, you gotta remember that the price of silver is so low a lot of those cash for gold shops are buying gold jewelry as opposed to gold coins there's a lot of gold jewelry out there and even a small gold necklace with the price of gold being as high as it is actually has some value a silver necklace just really isn't going to have much value at all because the price of silver is so low so it's it's not going to be in their interest to have cash for silver shops just because there's not going to be a big enough profit margin in it uh, then of course for the tinfoil hat crowd uh, the reason why you have the, all the cash for gold shops is because the bankers are trying to suck all the gold out of the citizens hands we saw that last week with the story that came out from Turkey where the Turkish government has strongly encouraged all the Turkish citizens who hold gold to deposit it in the banks to help the banks raise forex reserves and uh, supposedly they're exporting more gold than they mine which is kind of a strange thing but as I commented on that story I suspect that what's behind that is that Turkey is actually buying Iranian oil and paying for it with gold hence uh, there's a serious deficit gold deficit with that country now and they need to uh, take that gold from their citizens so ultimately that's what's going to be behind the cash for gold is to uh, take the gold from the citizens and next question questions hit hello brother John I check your site daily I listen to all your YouTube videos while I work and the people I work with ask why is he called brother John or why what does the F stand for I'm not what sure what to say I don't know all I know is that you have great insight on the silver community so if you have a second, share the story, uh, How Silver for the People and Brother John and the famous F came about. Thanks for your hard work. Well, Brother John, of course, is because I'm a Christian. I don't make a secret about that. The F is because every domain and every channel and everything else that was Brother John was already taken. So I used the first initial of my last name. So that's the reason for that. And last question from M-O-R-R-T-I-8. Brother John F. I'm still relatively new to investing in silver. I've been at it for several months and I was looking into dollar cost averaging concept. I was wondering if you had any videos on this subject or if you could offer a good explanation of this. Thanks for the site. Well, dollar cost averaging is just buying the same amount every week, every month, or whatever that time period is. And that's going to get you an average price based on the ascending market I don't really like dollar cost averaging I like a, lo a lot more than that I like to do what I will call dip averaging or dip buying and so uh, normally when you see dramatic drops in the price of silver that's probably when you want to go in and look to see what you can buy uh, we've got a pretty well that's Apple I'm sorry We've got a fairly dramatic drop here right now. Nothing like we have had in the past. You can see there was a very good drop. There was a very good drop. So if you're going to try to average, you probably want to buy the dips and just buy when we get back to the lines. The trend line right now is going to be a little bit below 30. If this long, long-term trend holds up, then it's going to be somewhere in there. Uh, we don't know where it's going to play out and that's why if you're convinced you have to be convinced in the fundamental case for silver and that's going to be supply and demand we're going to talk about that in the main story you've got to understand markets and supply and demand and the fundamentals of silver and if you're convinced of those things then uh, you're not going to be shaken out by dips you're going to look at them as buying opportunities so that's probably what we're nearing right now now let's get over to the main story of the night uh, before I do that, I want to cover some things on the blog. I did add a scrolling Amazon 
ad here for people who shop at Amazon and uh, if there's something you want me to cover just uh, send it to me I can add it there it's mainly books that I recommend and things that I've purchased as far as foods and survival stuff and then there's some other stuff there's some uh, solar cookers and camp so stuff mainly stuff that I've purchased myself or stuff that comes highly recommended so go ahead and uh, send recommendations on that now the main story is going to be this gas line situation with the hurricane Sandy I'm going to read part of this article from laissez-faire bookstore and it's a pretty big story right now because they're running out of gas in New Jersey and it's something about the morality of markets morals in markets there's something about people making a profit in an emergency situation that uh, people find distasteful now I understand why the term they use is gouging and I understand why they have that sentiment but these people are very misinformed they don't understand markets they don't understand that when you have an emergency you need rationing that's what these lines are there that's rationing when you need rationing the best rationing you can possibly have is rationing by price the reason why rationing by price is the best type of rationing is because that puts it back on each into individual to decide how important it is for them to purchase this good uh, for example if a particular individual is just topping off their tank and they see a one hour or two hour wait and they decide to go ahead and do that uh, they might be discouraged from doing that if the price were significantly higher that would leave more gas for others and the fact that their lines are causing all kinds of tie-ups if the prices were allowed to freely rise then of course the gas would be there for emergency vehicles and other vehicles and people could make their own decisions about how important it is now a lot of these people you've seen anecdotally a lot of these people standing in line some of them have turned around and sold the two or five gallon gas can for 50 bucks to the person who doesn't want to wait or the person whose time is more valuable than waiting uh, it it's just a, a individual metric uh, for each person there may be a person who has very little time and quite a bit of money and it may be worth it for them to pay fifty dollars for two gallons of gas now of course with the government passing its gouging regulations none of that is possible so the free market is shut down and that's a terrible thing let's go ahead and read some of this article to explain this this is by Jeffrey Tucker it's crazy in New York and New Jersey and commentators are mystified Hurricane Sandy was bad enough that's a natural disaster and we're dealing with it but then came the unnatural disaster in the form of government's response this is where the real catastrophe begins check out the mess in New Jersey the New York Times reports that widespread gas shortage stirred fears among residents and disrupted some rescue and emergency services in the New York region struggle to return to a semblance of normalcy after being ravaged by Hurricane Sandy fights anger lines craziness everywhere emergency shipments of gasoline are pouring in mail trucks are stuck supply trucks are stuck ambulances need fuel and can't get it the government is trying to get gas to the place but is hampered by traffic jams and chaos all around New Jersey has these weird laws that require the gas stations pump the gas for you why to save jobs I don't know but they are there as a result service station attendants are slaving breathing in serious fumes for 18 hours a day and desperately trying to keep the peace the images show scenes right out of the 1970s there are long gas lines as far as the eye can see tempers are inflamed meanwhile generators and cars need gas people's lives are at stake some have successfully found gas in Pennsylvania but you have to have enough gas to get there who can account for such bizarre things as these probably the greedy capitalists that work here right after all the state is fielding thousands of complaints of price gouging actually gouging 
if by that you mean raising prices according to market conditions, is exactly what will fix the problem. But the producers are not allowed to do so. The price system has been abolished, like socialism. Governor Christie himself has made it clear, quote, we will not hesitate to impose the strictest penalties on profiteers who in direct violation of our consumer protection laws seek to capitalize on the misfortune of others in the midst of a crisis and recovery period, end quote. So this guy, Governor Christie, this guy gets the dunce cap of the year award. Maybe he should go back to doing his acting role on The Sopranos or whatever he does. But uh, I'm sorry, but I don't I can't feel any more strongly than this about government officials who are clueless and don't know anything about markets. And of course, what do government officials do? They make the problem worse. Even more absurdly, the state has set pr gas prices at three dollars and fifty nine cents on the highways last week, reports the Times. It's serious. Last year, merchants paid huge fines for raising prices more than 10% in an emergency. And of course, people, we know with the war on terror and everything else, uh, the even you go back to the supposed bankruptcy during the Depression, I guess we're always in an emergency. So uh, when do these price controls ever stop? We don't know, but it's just downright silly. This means that they cannot respond to changes in supply and demand. A disabled price system means chaos. When the price is too low, producers drop out and consumers overutilize. Scarce resources are not being replenished and those that exist are being irrationally squandered. That's why price ceilings mean shortages. Gas shortages cause social disasters. We are seeing this in real time in New Jersey. It's a man-made disaster caused by stupid government officials, elected officials, and bureaucrats. Can it really be that observers of this situation have no clue about the cause? Can it be that fairly intelligent reporters and politicians are truly that stupid when it comes to basic economics? I fear that answer is yes. We are dealing with a governor who either has a brain the size of a pea or is so craven toward popular opinion that he's willing to throw away all rationality just to suck up to the bourgeoisie that knows not the first point of economic logic. Hence, this lesson. There is no real distinction between responding to economic conditions and so-called gouging. A law against gouging is a law against economic behavior. Merchants need to raise prices, not to reflect higher costs, though costs could rise, but to reflect changing conditions of supply and demand. A higher price would signal consumers to conserve. A higher price would also call forth greater supply, without having to have the government intervene with special shipments. A higher price would also settle the crowds down a bit and stop the insane attempt to stockpile as much as possible at the low price. Price controls cause human suffering yet again, and this time the toll is very high, even if it will always remain somewhat invisible. So there is an excellent analysis of that. We've got, as he said, someone with the, a brain the size of a pea trying to blame the people who are supplying the needed gasoline and prevent them from doing their job, which is to regulate the use of the product by supply and demand. There are so many things that the market does that correct behavior and the market itself is the best way to have a form of rationing because each, as I've said, each person considers their own individual circumstances and that's why it's the best form of rationing. Of course, we can't have that with these pea brain politicians in charge. Now, the same thing over a very long term has happened with silver. That's why the price of silver is being suppressed. That's why the price of silver is exploding because it's been suppressed for so long. 
suppression of something causes shortages and eventually it ends up in a price explosion and then of course you have uh, pea brain politicians uh, taking the moral high ground and claiming that the reason why the price explosion happened is because there are speculators involved of course the reason why the price explosion happened is because government was interfering with the market in this case it's the Federal Reserve and their minions JP Morgan and the banks who are suppressing the price of silver so the best thing we can do in that situation is go and buy some physical silver I've picked out some picks that I like uh, these aren't recommendations but they're just ones that I like right now I like the 2013 one ounce kookaburra you can pick this up this is at Gainesville you can pick this up for 3476 yes that's quite a bit above spot so uh, you might not want to pay that but then again uh, that's not much higher than where the price of silver was recently and if we get a snapback that could be a very good deal the next one is over on Atmex I really do like this 2011 one ounce Somalian elephant I do have some of these and uh, trust me they look even better in person these are as low as 3384 over at Atmex and the last one that I picked is the 2013 Canadian silver pronghorn antelope and that's available over at Provident Metals you can get that for as low as 3390 and uh, that's a pretty good deal it appears that the antelope is possibly making a run at being the next grizzly I don't think it's going to be the next timber wolf but it may be the next grizzly so back to the silver chart uh, the long-term price of silver is telling us that uh, it is at the beginning stages of a very explosive bull market that really has only just begun. Uh, we're pulling back right now, and that's a very good time for silver stackers. Uh, again, you're always going to have an explosion in prices when you have pea brain politicians suppressing prices by putting in price controls. We're seeing the results of that in uh, the aftermath of Hurricane Sandy and uh, the government not allowing prices to rise to cause the normal rationing that happens according to price and we'll talk to you next time